All right. So we talked a little bit about uh, we talked a little bit about fake news. Now let's talk about the environments, the ecology that drives the spreading of this fake news. So we now live in a world that's uh, well. We live in our digital worlds through social media, through our search engines, through our devices, through um, our photo sharing apps, through all the different ways that we interact with content and with each other. There's been some nice work looking at this ecology of sharing of fake news. Jonathan Albright um, has some nice posts on medium.com where he write, he, he's, he's done some sort of uh, um, analysis looking at uh, this ecology. Basically, you're looking here at kind of the major players that receive links from fake news sites. The size of the node represents, um, it represents the amount of links coming in from these fake news sites. The color represents the um, political leaning. Uh, the, if it's green, it's sort of, um, uh, sort, of, sort of neutral. The blue and red indicate um, the political different parties where this news is, is coming into and linking. So you see Breitbart News is blue. You have YouTube, YouTube is blue. Wikipedia blue. Um, you see these uh, different things. This, this kind of thing, again, is not new. I, we, I'll, I'll keep saying this before. There was a, a, a real um, spurt of this kind of fake news back in the, uh, the late 1800s during the Gilded Age. And that was, again, for similar reasons. It became cheaper and cheaper to become a publisher. Before that time, it was expensive to put up a new newspaper and run these kinds of things. Now it was, it was something that almost anyone could do. One of the more famous uh, spreading of fake news in the 1800s, though, was back in 1835, the Great Moon Hoax. The Great Moon Hoax was um, based on an article that was written in The Sun. It was the, that was the name of the, the newspaper at that time in New York. And the title of it was Great Astronomical Discoveries Lately Made by Sir John Herschel, which was, who was one of the more famous astronomers at that time. The claim was that this astronomer had built a big enough telescope that this individual could see to the moon. And at the moon, they were, they could, they were finding unicorns. They were, they were finding um, you know, these bat-like humanoids. They were finding beavers, I think, that could talk. I don't know how they could tell with talks either. I mean, but maybe they were moving their lips. There are all sorts of really, I mean, it, it would be kind of cool if the moon was like that. Um, but it really took off. There was about six articles that were written about this. This captured the imagination of citizens at the time. Um, there was lots of discussions of what they saw, what the environment was like on the moon. Um, but as you know, um, this doesn't really exist there. What happened to this after it was sort of debunked? And many years later, debunked, officially debunked. What happened to this particular newspaper? Not just at the time of the articles. Of course, it sort of got bigger and got received a lot of attention for this particular hoax. But what happened even after it ended? It increased circulation. Um, they start, they keep, keep, even after it was debunked, that didn't stop it from selling more newspapers. There's this term that's used in communication and journalism, something called yellow journalism. So this is a yellow journalism is the, the kind of um, reporting, kind of journalism that reports sensational topics, that reports uh, sort of tabloid-like. I mean, tabloidism and yellow journalism, there are some uh, slight, subtle differences. Uh, um, I'm sure our colleagues from journalism and communication can help uh, sort of differentiate these. But there are, it's this similar kind of reporting of news. You see this kind of stuff even in our grocery lines when we're looking. This is a you know, real thing from the weekly news that Abraham Lincoln was a woman. Well, it's um, not real that he was a woman. It's real that it's from the weekly news. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just, just in case. I'm glad you clarified that. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's also a shocking pic in, in White House basement of, of, of this kind of information. So, um, yes. So this kind of stuff, again, even though I keep referring to our digital environments, this stuff has been around. But I just don't think it's had quite the impact. It's not engulfing our everyday lives. You can go to the grocery store and sort of ignore it and look and get some gum and, and some, you know, whatever else is on the aisle to, next to the payment system. Um, the perfect storm is the environment we have now. We have a very partisan uh, uh, world now, at least in the United States. And we have this uh, social media environment that's spreading this. So we're, we are seeing this perfect storm. The echo chambers idea, I, I think, is, is something that um, is, is not, I, I would like to think that it's going to get better. 
um, sometime soon, but I think I, can, I see it to be a it'll be a continued problem going forward. We have to figure out how these um, environments, how we can break some of these echo chambers that confirm our, our biases. It's also just, just simply just too easy to share information. And on places like Facebook, you don't have that third party that, that um, sort of paid journalism or traditional subscription-based journalism. Um, you used to you know, expect that whatever newspaper you were paying um, a subscription fee to, we're going to do, um, that we're going to have a third party look at it. They were going to have multiple individuals sort of fact check. Now there is no fact check. It's just pass it along. In fact, it's, th there's more of the uh, sort of this non-traditional journalism that's being created that you can pass through so much easier and getting to more eyes than um, this, the, the mass media um, information. Now, this is a real problem too. Both Democrats and Republicans over time are, 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 are you know, have less trust in, in mainstream media. Of course, you see the, the Democrats here going down, the Republicans going down, really sinking over the last couple of years, according to this survey, um, this is sort of them together. With this, uh, this lack of trust for mainstream media, there's this movement over to social media. There's a, this is the other big problem. The other big problem is this is the feeling thermometer toward other political parties. So if you ask a random Democrat or Republican what they feel, what their trust meter is for the other party, this is it. I don't know if it's at all time lows, but this is really depressing as a society. I certainly, I'm more of an optimist. I don't think we have as many differences as these kinds of figures are showing. I think there are more similarities than, than we give credit for. The other, the other um, uh, real bad issue, just like the article we mentioned, um, the Russians are involved. Every country, I mean, the United States is involved in this kind of, inf uh, this kind of information warfare too. But just know that the bots, <coughs> the bot problem is a real big problem. Bots are used to sell items. It's used to sell propaganda. It's used to, um, if you, you, I mean, you can buy for about 100 bucks. I've played around a little bit with it. For $100, you can get 5,000 bots that retweets everything you ever say, makes you really look like you're an expert on, on Twitter. So, so the other thing is that, um, that these bots are duping our recommender systems. So if I do, the one thing that is clear, if I send a whole bunch of bots and get something retweeted enough times, the recommender systems in Twitter or Google will then surface those things based on the weightings of those algorithms. And that's, that's something that I think they will work on. And, you know, and then the other thing is, um, you know, the thing that concerns me more than sort of changing recommender systems for the movies I watch or the, uh, the products I buy, I mean, those are such, such inconvenient, there's a, some minor inconveniences, but it's this information warfare that we're talking about. Mm -hmm.